July 15, 1975, a significant day in man's exploration of space. This is the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, on your screen, you see the Apollo spacecraft sitting on top of a Saturn 1B rocket. The countdown for this launch, which is expected in about another 20 minutes, is going ahead of schedule, and they will launch on schedule. And so far here, everything, including the weather, has cooperated. The uh, countdown reported to us about half an hour ago was 30 minutes in advance of what it ought to be. That does not mean it will go early. That just means that things here are going extremely well. And up above the Earth, the Soyuz spacecraft is on its fifth orbit, and things are going well there now. Here is the voice of Apollo from Ke the Kennedy Space Center. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're now at the 15-minute mark, T-minus 15 minutes, and holding. just uh, announced will be last for exactly two minutes, so we're continuing to look for a 3.50 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time liftoff. As we come out of this hole, the spacecraft will go to full internal power. Up to this point, it's been being supported by ground power as well as the fuel cells. Uh, approximately T minus one minute and 15 seconds in the count. Slayton will trip a couple of switches, which will bring the spacecraft batteries online when they will be used then in addition to the fuel cells and as a backup. We're starting at this time, uh, chill down on the second stage Stark tanks and thrust chambers. They'll be receiving that super cold liquid hydrogen, so it's necessary to condition them for that. FT-23, a computer run to ensure the guidance data has been properly received and the guidance computer has also been run. We're holding now at the T-minus 15-minute mark. Uh, expect to be picking up our count again shortly. T-minus 15 and holding. This is Kennedy Launch Control. in space, a special report on the Apollo-Soyuz joint space mission. We are here at the Cape, and uh, as I said a moment ago, we will be seeing the uh, astronauts leave the Earth here in about 20 minutes, about 18 minutes now. With me are Jim Hartz and Alan Shepard. Alan is making a very successful transition, we think, for, from being a former astronaut to a, um, to a temporary journalist. Alan, we're glad to have you with us. Glad to be here, John. Uh, things seem to be going fairly well, gentlemen. Uh, the Russians lost their television camera, I understand. Jim, can you give us any details on that? We don't have very many details. We were told that we probably would not see any pictures at all until, uh, I guess, until they get uh, linked up and use some of the American cameras. Some, some difficulty. We were supposed to have some photographs as they were launching, uh, but it never happened. We have seen some pictures from inside the American uh, spacecraft, and that camera seems to be working all right. The Russian people, for the first time ever in their space program, were allowed to watch a launch live. Their normal practice is to release films or television tapes of the launches after they have been successfully made. Uh, this time, they did it our way, and they let the people of the Soviet Union see their astronauts go off, which they did in a very successful launch this morning. A lot of interest in Russia about this space shot, about this cooperation in space. There on your screen, you see Anatoly Dobrynin, the um, ambassador from the Soviet Union to the United States, and is that James Fletcher, the administrator of NASA. Now, they are here at Cape Kennedy at the moment, where they are uh, in the control center, and the ambassador will watch the liftoff here um, uh, as he watched the liftoff of the Russian spacecraft from the State Department in Washington today with President Ford, who made a little speech. Uh, I'm told that John Dancy of our staff has prepared a report on the Russian attitudes toward all of this. Um, the fact is that we waited for them to launch this morning, and now a lot of people in the Soviet Union, later in the evening there now, are waiting 
for us to launch. And I believe that Fancy's report is ready now. John, the Soviets went on the air with their own version of the pre-launch program, just as you went on the air there in the United States. They are receiving pictures from Houston, they're seeing the Houston control room, just as uh, the people in the United States are seeing the control room here in the Soviet Union. You spoke a bit about the openness of this shot. These uh, pictures of the Moscow control room are an example of that. Until a few weeks ago, we didn't even know that the control room existed. Or if we knew that it existed, we didn't know where it was. Well, the Soviets finally revealed that it was in the suburb of Kaliningrad, about 10 miles outside of Moscow. Not only did they reveal its existence, but they took us there. They showed us all, all the way through it, and now you're seeing live pictures from it. It's a super modern facility. The NASA people say that it's about twice as big as the uh, mission control room in Houston. And uh, from my own experience, I'd say it's about as big as the firing room at uh, Cape Kennedy. Uh, the control room has been quite active throughout the day as the Soviet technicians watched uh, not only what was going on on their own spacecraft, but watched to see uh, what the Americans were doing. Pictures began about three hours ago coming from Cape Kennedy. Here is the voice of Apollo from Ke the Kennedy Space Center. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're T minus three minutes, 52 seconds and counting. Everything proceeding okay, smoothly uh, at this time. Seven, launch Operations seven, Manager seven, Paul Donnelly checked in with the crew on the uh, Astrocom launch circuit. He said, uh, Apollo, this is the Launch Operations Manager. Tom, Deke, and Vance, the launch team wants you to know we saved the best till last. Good luck and Godspeed. And uh, astronaut Slate, uh, Stafford, said thank you all so much. Thanks for everything. Countdown continuing smoothly at this point. We'll be going on the automatic sequencer at the T-minus 3 minutes 7 second mark. We're approaching that time at this point. Once we get on that automatic sequencer, all actions in the count will be handled automatically by the sequencer. Mark, T-minus 3 minutes 7 seconds and the launch sequencer. Sequence has started. Each sequence now must take place at the right time and in the proper sequence, or it would be automatically cut off. We would get an automatic cutoff in the countdown. That did occur once on Apollo 17, where we had a cutoff at the T minus 30 second mark. T minus 45 minutes and counting. T minus two, two minutes, 45 seconds and counting. Everything continuing to move well. One of the first actions taken by the sequencer was terminating the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen propellant. We'll be uh, pressurizing the tanks at this point. They're pressurized to ensure a smooth flow of fuel down to the engines during the powered phase of flight. The second stage LOX tank now has been pressurized and the first stage fuel tank has been pressurized. We should have pressurization on, on all fuel tanks by the 30-second mark in the countdown. We're approaching the two-minute mark at this point, approaching the two-minute mark in our countdown. Everything's continuing to run smoothly. Mark, T-minus two minutes. T-minus two minutes and counting. Events have come and closed now. Tanks being pressurized. At one minute, 25 seconds, we'll look for a second stage fuel tank to be pressurized. We have a large status board here in the firing room which shows these events as they're taking place. First stage fuel tank now pressurized, T minus one minute, 40 seconds. At the T minus one minute, 15 second mark in the countdown, astronaut Deke Slayton will put two switches in the spacecraft to bring the spacecraft batteries online. These batteries will give added electrical power and also are a backup to the fuel cells. At the one minute mark, the water will start pouring onto the flame detector underneath the pad, and at 30 seconds, we'll uh, get water on the mobile launcher deck itself. Deke now has brought those uh, batteries online, T minus one minute, six seconds. The last action performed by the crew will be at T minus 45 seconds, and at that time, Tom Stafford will make a final guidance alignment. T minus 55 seconds, we'll be getting a switch to internal power shortly. All of the uh, tanks now pressurized, and we're switching to internal power. Stafford reports he has made the final GDC lines. First stage, second stage, and instrument unit now on internal power. Approaching the 30 second mark in our countdown, water pouring onto the flame deflector now coming onto the uh, deck.
deck of the mobile launcher. Everything proceeding smoothly. We've got a guidance release at the 17 second mark. 20 seconds. The engines will actually start. The engine sequence starts at 3.1 seconds in the countdown. We'll hold down till thrust builds up. 11. Engine 10, ready light on. 9, 10, 9, 8, 8 7, 6, 6 5, 5, 4, 4 3, 3, 2, 2 engine 1, sequence start. 0. 1, 0, launch commit. We have a liftoff. All engines building up thrust. Moving out. Clear the tower. Uh, roger, tower clear. Roger, Tom, you got good thrust on all engines here. Right on the money. Uh, roger. I got a roll program. Stop it. Not much. Uh, roger. Yeah, she goes pitch program. A little shaky lift off, but it's smooth as stuff now. Launch vehicle beginning, beginning a 45 second maneuver to the proper roll. Trajectory looking good. Uh, we're on the way. Roger, Tom, you're looking real fine. Coming up on one minute, we're clear of the beach. Now three miles in altitude, one mile downrange. Stand by for mode one Bravo. Mark, one Bravo. One Bravo, two Gs. Roger. Cabin pressure's coming down. Roger. Cabin pressure relieving as expected, coming up on the region of maximum dynamic pressure. And we're still, uh, we're through max Q, everything's still looking good. Then your feet wet, on your way. Roger, feet wet. At 30 seconds, still looking good. Six miles downrange. Thank you. 
Houston, coming up on four and a half minutes, your go. And uh, Vince, uh, we think that that was a package temp that was low. It's come up with intolerance now, and you're looking fine. That's right, that works. 430, back to lunch acceleration. What can you do? Roger. Now approaching 200 miles downrange, 76 miles in altitude. Everything looks very good trajectory-wise. And we have about uh, five minutes remaining in this burn on the second stage. Oh, Houston, at five minutes, you're go. Roger, five minutes, let's get on board, Nick. Yeah, we got the beautiful sight. seconds. Play director Pete Frank getting another status report around the room and everything looking good. Houston, you're right on at six well, minutes. We'll get you to say Three minutes, 40 seconds remaining in this burn. The launch vehicle continuing to pick over and uh, pitch over and pick up speed rapidly. 13,000 feet per second oh, is the current right, velocity. Okay, Dick, thank you. Stand by 
Vermont 3 Alpha. Roger. Mark, Mount 3 Alpha. Roger, 3 Alpha. For shutdown. Stand by for mode four capability. Russian. Mark mode four capability. Russian. Go. Roger. And we're right in there. We are here. Okay, VI two five six four nine. Each drop minus four. Altitude eighty three point two. Okay, Van. Thank you. Thank you all. 